Hello and welcome to my latest exclusive here at TomSportsJournal.com as I'm joined by the former World Youth Champion Aaron Monk. Hello Aaron, I hope you're keeping well during lockdown. It's a testing time for us all. Hi Tom, um, yeah, it is, it is at the moment mate. Uh, not a lot going on, just trying to stay busy. Now Aaron, let's first start with the Icons of Dart series that you've been involved in with Modus, obviously hitting a nine darter on stream using new darts as well, I'm led to believe. Uh, yeah, well, um, I've been throwing a little bit uh, and trying um, the odd set of darts here and there just while I've got the time at home because there's nothing else to do. And um, yeah, Modus gave me a call saying I'm interested in playing. I was like, yeah, and I was trying these little fat little red darts out. I thought I'd give these a go because they're coming out nicely. Next thing you know, I'm pinging a nine dart. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because they are quite a chubby barrel, as you say. So to hit a nine dart leg with those, it's it's difficult just to see three darts going to treble twenty. That they are quite a quite a chewing, like a Andy Fordham or a John Lowe sort of shape, aren't they? Yeah, well, you'd think that um, you wouldn't be able to get like hit many one eighties, but I hit <laughs> so many one eighties with them fat darts. Um, if you look at like I know Aspinall's darts, they're quite chunky mm. and all that, but he groups them well as well. I don't know what it is, but they seem to go in better than the skinny darts for me. So let's just take you back to 2008, Aaron. Of course, you successfully won the Kids on the Hockey series involving Phil Taylor, uh, beating the likes of Joe Cullen, Michael Smith en route to winning that. What were your best memories of that particular event? Can I go back some years now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember um, getting invited to play into that. Um, that, was just, that was back when the PDC was probably just come out of the pubs and it was going into um, the sports um, arenas. And... Uh, there's only a few young lads playing at that time, and they got us all together. I think eight of us to play that new kids on the hockey. Um, I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to do well on it because you know I didn't know Michael that well or Joe, to be fair, back then. And um, yeah, it all came together on the day for me. Um, I remember playing Joe in the final. It was a pretty good, pretty good final. Um, I think we both averaged above ninety. But um, yeah, I think the, the final was the best moment, um, obviously because I won it. But um, yeah, I think it was the best match of the day. Obviously, looking now, 12 years on, the likes of Michael Smith and Joe Cullen have both won PDC ranking events. Do you think now that you, you look back and obviously you, you were up there with those sort of names, is it only a matter of time now before Aaron Monk wins the PDC ranking event? Oh, I don't know. Everyone who, I used to smash back then, all mm. seemed to do better, have gone on and done really well, <laughs> uh, apart from me. <laughs> um, I, I hope so. I've got the game. I've got the game. It's just the uh, mental side of it I suffer with. Um, I've just got such, I'm just so bad at losing. I just can't help but get the ump with myself when I lose. Um, everyone else seems to have a nice, calm head. I don't know how they do it. I wish they could um, let me on, let me in on the secret. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I just ain't really caught fire. I mean, I won't, I mean, one game I can average 100 and 106. The next game I can average 85. That's kind of how my game's gone, really. But fair play to Michael and the rest of them. They've, they've um, smashed it. So obviously, moving on from that, you of course defeated MVG at the um, on the World Championship stage in the Under Twenty One World Championship final. It was called then. Now, that must have been such a fantastic feeling playing in front of a pack crowd to win at the time. What big title to win? We all know what Michael's gone on to achieve since then as well. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I used to play Michael. I used to beat. My, I used to five one up on Michael um, going into um, that final. Um, but to be fair, the qualified for it um, I went in I went playing that well to be fair and then obviously it was that one day event and somehow um, I remember Joe going out in the quarters and I was meant to play him and um, I played Lewis Leans in the semis and um, I was quite happy that Joe went out nothing against uh, Lewis but um, obviously Joe was the name and ended up calling five for the final and then I was living with Simon Whitlock at the time in Portsmouth and uh about a week or two weeks before, leading up to it, I weren't practicing at all well. I was all over the place. And I remember on the final day, I didn't, I didn't have any stems with me. and ended up getting Simon to ask Michael, can I borrow three, three of his stems? <laughs> and I ended up using his stems against him in the final. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad it all clicked on the night. So obviously after that, you obviously qualify for the Grand Slam of Darts on the back of that. It must have been a great feeling, obviously at that age to be playing on the big stage, big crowds, and, and getting a few games under your belt? 
Yeah, I mean, I was nervous as uh, hell to uh, play on the stage. But, uh, but yeah, I think my first game at the grandstand was against uh, Paul Nicholson. And it was, um, I think he beat me 5-4, which, you know, I took. I, I, was, I was happy with the results, to be fair. Um, after playing Michael and then playing um, Paul on stage, I, I wasn't too sure how I was going to play. But um, I set well on the stage for some reason. I have no problem with it. So obviously after that you secured your PDC tour car for the first time, you enjoyed some great success getting into the world's top 50, you must have felt like there was plenty more to come, I seem to remember obviously you mentioned that you used to live with Simon Whitlock, you got a really close friendship with Simon. Yeah, we used to practice all the time, yeah, well, like I said I lived with him for about six months I think it was, um, used to play, we used to come out of all city kind of games to help us um, improve in the game, <laughs> um, yeah, like you say, i made the top 50 I think I got to 39 in the world um, yeah and it's kind of just I don't know what happened you know every dart player goes through a bad patch and all that um, no matter how good you are it's all about trying to get out of that bad patch and come back again um, I mean I've probably playing better than I ever have done it's just you just you just need a good to, um, play well at the right place at the right time I think now after a break from PDC darts for a couple of years you enjoyed a decent year on the tour last year reaching two quarterfinals and a semi-final on the Players' Championship Series, uh, qualifying for the World Championship at Alexander Palace. Uh, you must be feeling now like you're getting back to producing your best form, despite obviously losing your tour card last year. You must feel that there's plenty more in the tank. Yeah, definitely. The start of last year, um, I was playing really, really well. Um, I'll tell you where it started to go a little bit downhill for me. So I went on holiday for three weeks. I went to Gran Canaria for two weeks and then straight to Vegas for a week and then I come back for not throwing a dart for three weeks and it weren't quite the same I still had a couple of good results after that um, the World Champs is obviously a nightmare for me as it has been every time I've been up there for some reason I just slight, I just hit a little dip in my um, performance leading up to it uh, but like you say yeah um, I feel like I'm playing great darts uh, but also so is everyone else that's the problem you make you miss one good chance, and then next you know you you've lost, and you're like, ah, oh, about to swear I won. Um, but yeah, every, the standards are so high now. You got to play uh, top top quality darts. If not, you get dunked out first round. Obviously, you mentioned you've uh, tinkered with your darts setup a bit. It can it can often be a small little change in equipment that can that can make such a big impact. Yeah, I'm always looking to change the slightest thing just to help my darts go in a different angle or just you know, trial and error. You don't really know. Sometimes I'll put a set together and I think these are the ones and then under pressure, they're not very good. You know, I'm always looking at different shape flights, different this, different that. Um, you know, I ain't, I ain't scared to uh, change the setup. A bit like Peter Wright. <laughs> but, you know, but then you look at like Wadey. He ain't changed. I can't remember the last time he ever changed this setup. He's just stuck <laughs> on the same darts. I mean, you know, I I can't do that. As soon as I don't feel like I'm playing well, I think, no, nah, I need to change something. <laughs> I mean, take Simon, for example. He sort of cuts his flights into different shapes. He even makes his own his own points. Oh, yeah, that, that guy's crazy, some <laughs> of the stuff he does. I've, I've seen so many crazy... He cuts his flights all different shapes. I mean, he always has different colour stems because he thinks different colour stems make him play better. You know, I've seen multiple holes in the flight because uh, he thinks that helps and you know, he's done loads of crazy stuff, that guy. He even made, I remember he made a, a set of points out of Allen keys, is that correct? Yeah, he's made sets of uh, points out of Allen keys, out of screws. I mean, the ones he made out of screws, they used to tear the board up so bad. <laughs> I mean, you, he planned it for 10 minutes and the whole 20 was just fluffy. You know, you had to spin the board. So, Aaron, obviously you went to PDC Q School in January. January it was unsuccessful for you, but um, will you be returning to competitive action on the Challenge Tour, etc., maybe, when the restrictions are lifted and we're back to playing again? Yeah, my head went in the right place at Q School. To decide I didn't want to go. Um, I just went for the sake of it, I think. Uh, yeah, and then I didn't go to the first Challenge Tour because my head still went in the right place. I just went up to it. Um, but since then, um, you know, I think this lockdown things really helped me out because I got back on the board with my confidence back and yeah I'll definitely be playing the Channel Shore once it's back on and then back to Key score again next year So Aaron obviously growing up watching your dad play is that what made you want to take up darts as a profession? Yeah definitely if he didn't play darts I would never play darts I, I always say to him why couldn't you play golf or 
or any or tennis or something like that. I would have took that up as a darts. Uh, but yeah, he played darts, so I naturally just took it up. It must have been great watching your dad play, though. He's such a big name back in the day, and uh, just just trying to replicate what what he's done. It must must have been great for you as a kid uh, watching your dad play. Uh, oh yeah, of course. I mean, I can't really remember the lakeside. Um, matches but you know you talk I talked to other people with mates and all that and they all tell me how good he was and all he's done I mean I just look at the trophies he's got over 300 of trophies I mean he's won in the BDA he won every tournament bar the lakeside um, so yeah, yeah great player I've seen that you've been playing in a few local competitions as well with the likes of Luke Humphreys Simon Whitlock Richard North etc does that help you keep match sharp ahead of uh, PDC events do you think um, yeah, are we, I mean, it's a good laugh when we play, um, comps with them. It does keep, keeps you sharp, you know, we're all mates and all that. And it's, it's, um, it's hard playing your mates. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we all have good banter and all that, but yeah, it keeps you nice and sharp, um, ready for the tour. Yeah. I know. I noticed that when Simon Whitlock was suffering that real dip in form, uh, where he, where he uh, dropped out of the Premier League and he was really struggling for form until he reached the final of the Grand Prix. I remember that he was uh, going to every single little tournament in and around Hampshire, just trying to get his confidence back. Yeah, he, he loves... I mean, that guy's... Uh, he's got the, the mental game there. He's got the strongest head I've ever seen. He'll never... T- even though he's going for a bad patch, he'll never tell you that he's playing bad. He'll never say that. They wouldn't, the words wouldn't, wouldn't come out of his mouth. Um, he's the kind of guy who'll lose in the match play on a Saturday, and he'll be at the local comp on a Sunday. That's just the guy he is. He just loves... Love starts. Obviously, back in Australia, you used to go. You have to travel 18 hours to a comp. So, travelling a couple of hours up the road or you know an hour or two, it's nothing to him. So he don't mind doing it. So we all know, Aaron, that you like to keep fit. Does having a healthy regime benefit you anyway? Of course, we see more and more players looking after themselves in a physical sense. The likes of yourself, Josh Payne, Gerwin Price, etc., painting a new image of the modern day darts player. Yeah, I always try and. Stay in reasonable shape. You know, it's easy to get out of shape with darts because you're always traveling, you're always in hotels. You know, after darts, you've got nothing, you know, easy to get a takeaway and stuff like that. So during the week, I like to try and um, exercise at the gym as much as I can. But to be fair, I've laid off the weights for quite a while now just to see um, what effect it does on my darts because I used to do a lot of heavy lifting. And um, I used to always say it didn't affect me, but since I've stopped the heavy lifting and stuff like that, my arm feels a lot lot um a lot lighter like it's um not fatigued as much um i think it's helped me out um quite a bit to be fair that i've laid off the heavy weights but yeah staying in shape is always going to be my um goal i don't want to get out of shape definitely now you've obviously been with modus for as long as i can remember anyway and um, playing in exhibitions against the world's best players uh, being looked after so professionally from such a young age does does it keep you at ease knowing that you can just go to events, play your games without added, any added anxiety or any pressure? Uh, yeah, well, that's the best thing about being looked after. Um, you just ain't got to worry about nothing. They do it all for you. You literally just got to concentrate on your darts. Um, yeah, it just takes a lot of stress off you. Um, yeah, your mind's at ease and then you just let the darts do the talking, really. It's such a good stable to be a part of as well because Jason looks after everything so so professional about the way the set even the exhibitions the the management itself you'll ask any player that's um representing modus in any way and you'll they'll tell you it's the most professional um group yeah but i think modus is the best uh management you know i think Jay, jason's great like you say he's only a phone call away you know you've got a problem you just you just phone him up and he sorts it out for you um yeah they can't go, can't go wrong with my eyes so obviously you've played in a fair in a fair amount of exhibitions in your time. Um, just what thing is it like? Obviously it's a lot different from playing in a competitive match. There's a bit of fun into it and and having a bit of a laugh with the crowd. Just just how much do you enjoy the exhibition circuit? Exhibitions is great fun. It is even though I still take it dead serious for some reason. <laughs> if I'm if, if I'm like an eight man event, I would still take it dead serious. I still want to win, but. Um, yeah, it's good to play against a crowd and you do the silly trick shots and stuff like that and you can have great banter with the crowd um, on and off the board. Yeah, it's just a nice relaxed environment. It's just um, a chance to show off your personality to you know people who never met you. So yeah, exhibitions is always good fun. So since joining the PDC, Aaron, when you first won your tour card, is there any 
standout moment for you? I'll say, I'll tell you, um, the World Championships qualifiers, qualifying through that, I was over the moon because I didn't quite make the Worlds and I had to go to the qualifiers. And there was only, I think there was only one qualifier and I ended up winning it. I beat Joe Cullen in the final. I think he might have got a prudent game, actually. That is one of the good highlights for me because that made me um, play in the work for my first World Championships in 2011, I think it was. So many thanks for coming on and chatting with me today, Aaron. It's been a pleasure and I wish you all the very best when the action eventually resumes. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Cheers. Thanks for your time.